Greetings. So what is HEMA? It stands for Historical European Martial Arts. Martial art is a term from Italy, essentially meaning war system, although it's been given a different connotation today from Eastern martial arts popularity. So any system from Europe where it is about combat in a historical time period is put under HEMA, from Nordic wrestling of the 1100s to bayonet combat of World War II. It is quite a large umbrella. It can also be called historical fencing. Fencing also has a different connotation today, but originally meant life and death combat. It came from the term defense to fence. What separates HEMA from many martial arts is the strong use of manuscripts and treatises, detailing combat written by masters from the time period. The first fencing manuscript ever found in Europe is from roughly the 1320s. It depicts sword and buckler. This means prior to that there isn't actually any detailed facts about how to fight. Roman and Viking combat that we know are simply based on anecdotes and some accounts, not even first hand some of them. But getting to late medieval period in the 1400s, there are hundreds of manuscripts that have been found detailing combat, and each person practicing Hema is encouraged to learn directly from the master's teachings. This does mean we don't have someone telling us we're right, so every piece of reconstruction of a combat system we make is actually just our interpretation, so there are lots of interpretations. The weapon most people learn to use is the longsword. It's not a specific sword, any double-edged blade from Europe held with two hands is a longsword. It wasn't used for long, only the 1300s to 1500s in Mortal Kombat, meaning prior to the 1300s only one-handed swords were used in Europe, and they were just called swords, although now we call them arming swords to differentiate them. But fencing schools had started becoming popular in the 1500s, and the longsword would be a tournament weapon for centuries to come. Other weapons commonly practiced with are langesmesser, rapier, saber, dagger, wrestling, and pole weapons are practiced with, uh, but they hit too hard for intense sparring. The longer the weapon, the more speed and power it generates. There are inexpensive nylon swords that are very good to start with and very durable, and steel versions as well, made with thick edges, tip, and bend on a thrust to be safe. Having a blunt sword means it's often slightly heavier than a sharp one. We use historical ways to make the blade safe. Real steel longswords are around 3 pounds, and many one-handed swords will be under 2 pounds. Medieval swords are not heavy like they appear in movies. They're lightning fast and can be used for long periods. There are different things people try to accomplish in HEMA. Some try to simulate tournament fencing of the period, some mortal combat, some in armor, some unarmored. Most practice unarmored combat, meaning cuts will harm your opponent. Our equipment is made to be light and mobile in order to help this. It's been a long journey to have good protective equipment. Most have been made in the last 10 years. There are many aspects of HEMA that bring people in. It's a way to learn history in an intimate way, trying to see the world of your ancestors firsthand. It's a skill to gain mastery for exercise, for learning self-defense, movement, tactics, although you can find stuff optimized for our time period easier when it comes to self-defense. For choreography, and because there are primary bladed weapon systems, strength and weight is nowhere near the most important thing in order to be effective, unlike hand-to-hand. -hand. And you get to use swords. Swords are cool. All right, ready, set, go. Oh my goodness. <laughs> 